Welcome today to the Lily Meadows channel. Today is February 13th, 2024. God, we thank you for your church bells, for your Holy Spirit, for the birds singing. in the beautiful spring-like day. God, let your presence come and say what you're saying. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Because thanks be to God, he leads us in triumph every day. And the reality of who he is is that when he enlists a person into his service, he backs them up. He comes with his power into what he asks them to do because they're not doing anything of their own will. Jesus said, I do not do anything of myself, but I only do what I see the Father doing. And so as we do that, his children today, as we do what we see our Father doing, he will come up under it and back us up in the same way a surfer cannot surf without a way. And what the Lord has been speaking to me about recently is that there is a false version of the Holy Spirit. So you, of course we know you have a false version of Christianity. You know that you've seen people at church who carry the heart of Satan against God's children. They gossip, they slander, they say they're pray we need to pray for them because this and this, but they are working as an accuser of the brethren to destroy. Okay, you know that. Have you seen it before? You had to be honest with God. Of course you have. Now, that is reality. So you can have a false religion. Okay, you can say it's a Christian, but it's false. Well, what God, you know, that's obvious. Hello. But what God was saying to me recently and sharing with me is that there's a whole also a false Holy Spirit that is an evil spirit that masquerades as Holy Spirit and people get giggly and laughy and they um, feel ridiculous, but they're not changed by it. And God is going to destroy the works of darkness. That's why Jesus Christ came. And when you have the real, the false next to it, especially when it comes to God, and especially as it comes to his Holy Spirit. we That's one thing, beloved, that we do not want to blaspheme and dishonor. So if you are not with me in heart and spirit and truth before God and not ready for Holy Spirit to move upon you wherever you are, whenever you're listening, turn this off. That is your warning. There is a reality to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. God does not take it lightly and there are consequences you don't want to have. So if you don't like me and you're watching to curse me or to judge me or to exalt yourself over me, turn it off right now. That's your warning. Fair, fair warning. Because he told me <clears throat> regarding blaspheming his Holy Spirit, these things are not good and carry heavy consequences. And I don't want you to have those consequences on your life. And I was praying about that when he shared that Holy Spirit's going to move in today's message. And I um, was praying, you know, knowing the reality of the severity of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And I know there may be people watching me who really sit on a very high, high horse and judge and exalt themselves. And that would be blaspheming the Holy Spirit today. So turn this off, okay? For your own sake, amen. Now, today we're in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, 
So I am sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And before God, my life has to be worthy to carry this gospel. And a lot of times, beloved, you know, that in order to carry this gospel, we have to lay our own lives down. We have to be go through tribulation and trial and be hated of man and and blessed are you when men speak all evil falsely against you, right? So that's just part of reality. So our, our manner of life has to be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit. And right now, Paul is absent. He's in the great cloud of witnesses. And I believe that he still would like to see us and hear of us that we are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. And I know I love my brethren who I stand side by side for the faith of the gospel with. You know who you are, and God knows who you are, and I'm grateful every day for every one of you to stand beside and not frightened in anything by your opponents. Right? Listen, this is a clear sign to them of their destruction. I ain't afraid of you, right? That's what you say to your opponents. We're not afraid of the devil. We're not afraid of those sitting up on their tall high horse. We are not afraid. 365 and more times, God tells us in his Bible, do not be afraid. Amen. And so we should take seriously what he said. Because, and then we do, because listen, why would I be afraid of somebody and what they thought or what they said or whatever? Why would I? Because I don't even know my commission to the fullness. So how would they know who don't even talk to me in the world? You know what I'm saying? Of course they don't know. All right. So why would I care what they think? Right. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of any, the principalities and powers that we wrestle against. I'm not afraid, and neither should you be. If you are living your life in a manner, manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Amen. With one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel with your brethren. There's no gossip there. There's no self-exaltation. There's no um, anything but lay down your life and worship God. And that's where we live, and that's everything, right? And not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction. Amen? Yes. But of your salvation, and that from God. I mean, think about every Bible story. We're always people who came against the children of God, who were living to serve God. Always there were people. They came against them, but they were not afraid, and that was a clear sign to them of their destruction. Amen? And of the salvation of the person standing with God, right? And that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Engage in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now here that I still have. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and in one mind. And what a blessing that is to exist in that manner with our brethren. I am so grateful every day for that. And I love them so much. And you do too, right? I love you so much. Most of you watching are those, are those my brethren that, that that's speaking of. And the reality of Christ is that his love is in us. And we have that love for one another. Amen. And we, when that love is in us and we have a love for one another, we are not afraid of our opponent. And that is a sure sign to them that they are already defeated. Listen, whatever comes against you, Christ in you is stronger and more powerful to defend you than the enemy is to hurt you. 
right? But sometimes God allows the enemy to come to test us and to make us right with God. Amen. So when we go through things and we call upon God and he holds us and he wipes our tears, we are becoming like Christ in the image of God in Christ. He showed us that. He suffered many things. He was dishonored. He was rejected. When he offered his very own self, they went to kill him and they did kill him. Right? And then those who went and proclaimed him after him, they killed them too. That's because the enemy really wants those who know God and walk with him to be dead. The problem is that there's dead, death, burial, and resurrection. And you can't, it's like a, a triangle, you can't die to yourself and not be raised again in Christ, even in your earthly life. Where you then, if you're dead, right? Let's say I'm not talking about physically dead. I'm saying if you die to yourself, like the entire Bible counsels us to do. Jesus said, if you don't die to yourself, you cannot be alive. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Okay? Not a foreign concept at all. Now, if you are dead in that manner, and somebody comes up to you and says, we don't like you. There's no offense. If they say anything bad about you, there's no offense because there's nothing to be offended because it's dead. And then in, that's freedom. Beloved, in the nasty old world we live in, is that not freedom? Because death to yourself, burial, submission to God, and resurrection, you come alive again in your eternal life. And you can bear eternal fruit like Jesus counseled us to do. He wants us to have eternal fruit. Amen. And he honors that fruit and the faith that produces it. And today we're going to take a little journey, beloved, into the spiritual aspects of your, your spiritual life and being seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, Enoch is going to tell us about what these look like because Enoch walked with God. He was not, and he walked with God. No, and he, he, he was taken. He didn't have to die. He's honored in the book of Hebrews, and he's honored in the Genesis. He is beloved of God, and he saw many things because he walked with God. Today, right, today, he would say like Paul, I would wish that you would also walk with God in this way, that God would show you things, you would have experiences, spiritual experiences with God, where you're praying and he speaks to you yesterday in regular prayer. I saw a keyhole and I could see light through it. And I remembered my sister had a word about that and that God is opening the door in the Bible verse that no man can shut. And he is going to come through it in my own life. And I'm so grateful that my life could be a pleasing offering to God and he could come through it like a gate. Because, you know, the apostles, they became 12 gates in heaven. There are 12 gates. I mean, that 12 gates named after them. And that speaks of their commission to bring Christ and to make known to all the world the gospel of Christ and to allow them to know how to come home to God. And Jesus clearly showed us as he lived unto his father, he died unto his father for us. He took on your sin and mine. And then he rose from the grave unto his father. And now he sits at the right hand of his father and brings us unto his father. And that's a great and glorious mystery that we could talk about when you put it in words. It's interesting. You know, it's academic. 
But what about when it becomes your reality? When you are praying and you are with God, like John in the book of Revelation. That is what God wants for you. And we're going to read the book of Enoch, where God tells us about these worlds that we're going to talk about. Amen. Enoch chapter 28. Then I went to another place from the desert toward the east of that mountain which I had approached. So Enoch is seeing a supernatural reality. And it, it is basically the trees in the book of Revelation that bear fruit every month. And the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Amen. And that's what he's talking about. The Christian. The person who is rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Who produces fruit. Eternal fruit. Which is with the lady in the grocery store. When you say to her something and you touch her heart, you know what I'm talking about. It's a continual impact you have with the love of God on people's lives around you. Amen. And re in the real world. And that's eternal fruit. This message is eternal fruit because somebody's life could be changed. Not because I'm saying something profound or even reading a book to you that is profound. It is because the presence of God comes through and that the Holy Spirit is in your room. I mean, the camera might be crooked. My hair is a mess. I couldn't quite get the right matching sweater. All of that's immaterial because God is coming. And I just gave, I'm like, oh, you know what, God, just do it. I don't know. Whatever it is, it is. Just do what you're doing and let your presence come. And that is where it's at. Because if his presence comes, he's changing you, then it's eternal fruit. If I can make this camera say perfect, my hair every inch perfect, and everything just so, and I could pristinely tell you something, it would mean nothing. It'd be gonging symbols, pointless. But if God comes, it don't matter about anything else. Does that make sense? Because God is our refuge. He is our stronghold. And when he comes, you hear what he's saying. And then he is inviting. I promise all those who are walking with God today, he is inviting us into a reality so that we might actually know what does it look like to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. It doesn't mean just when you die. It means in your life now. Because when you lay down your life in this world, you become alive. What does that look like? Where do you live? What are you? Well, I'm, I'm going to shed by the power and presence of God and the insight Enoch is giving us. We are going to learn some things about that. So let's give thanks and ask God to open our ears. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, for the birdies singing and the peace that passes understanding. Open our eyes so we might see what Enoch is saying. Because unless you open our eyes, we will be blind. In Jesus' name. But if he opened them, and if you ask him to open your eyes, then you won't be blind. Then you'll see the magnificence of, of the God that we call um, God. Amen. The God that we know. And we become more knowledgeable about who we're praying to and what we're saying and the cool thing about that is when I know who I'm saying because you know that's what Jesus said when they said Hattie Hammond said this when they said teach us to pray Lord they didn't mean like teach us how to systematically ask for stuff they said um they said teach us to pray like teach us to engage father because as soon as Jesus, he said, our father, he engaged father. He knew who he was talking to. And if you know who you're talking to, your prayer, like personally, intimately know, your prayer will be heard. And there's no intermitting. There's nothing in between you and God when you pray. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do. And when two or more are gathered together, I am in the midst of them, right? And so when you gather with your brethren and you pray and you know who you're talking to, there is great um, power, unlimited power, in the one that we call Father. Amen? 
Amen. So let's pray for a moment. Our Father, I, you know, I'm, I'm a mess this morning. My hair's a mess. And, you know, it's just probably those listening are a mess in different ways. And we just come, we bring our mess to you, our Father. In your perfection, in your in your holiness of glory, we ask you to open our eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We are in the book of Enoch. That's my favorite portion. It's also on Amazon Audible, chapter 28. Then I went to another place from the desert toward the east of that mountain which I had approached. There I beheld choice trees, particularly those which produced the sweet-smelling medicine frankincense, and myrrh, sacrifice. If you look those up, you know, in order to get frankincense and myrrh, you're going to have to pour out your life. Amen. To give him that offering, a fragrant offering. Amen. And trees unlike to each other. So we are different than each other, and that's, that's glorious, right? I don't want to be the same as everyone. We're all different, and I love the differences. In my brethren, and over it above them was the elevation of the eastern mountain, at no great distance. Likewise, I saw another place with valleys of water which never wasted, where I perceived a good tree which in smell resembled zaconin. And towards the sides of these valleys I perceived cinnamon of a sweet odor. Over them I advanced toward the east. He is seeing us. The trees in the book of Revelation. We exist when we lay down our lives and we get under the dirt, you know, late when a grain of wheat falls to the ground. When we give him our lives in this world, he raises us up to become. See, he didn't start really creating us until we died to ourselves and came alive in Christ. Then our Plato was so soft, he could create us into anything he wants. He is the creator who created every hummingbird. And those sounds of the birds that you hear, he created their, their voice box to make those sounds. He is a very distinct and specific creator. So when we die to ourselves and we're soft, moldable clay, he is the potter. And if we are wise enough to let him be the potter of our life, he will make a glorious new creation. And we will look like Christ each one different in our own unique way, but we will bear the image of God, which he intended in the first place. Believe me, God will have what he wants. He's the creator of it all. He'll have it. He has to go his own way to get it. You know I mean? He had to give free choice. In order to get me to lay down my life and be alive, I had to have a freedom to choose. In the same way, Christ, Jesus, he said, God, if it's possible, let this cup go from me. But nevertheless, your will be done. And he went and he walked right into the most torturous thing any human's ever experienced. He walked right into that. Why? For you and for me. That's who he is. He willingly walked. He willingly let them spit on him. He willingly. Hey, amen. That's hard for humans to do that. But if we will willingly lay our life down before God, Man, that's where life is. If we spend our entire life caring what people think, building ourselves up, building our life in this world, as soon as we leave our body, it's all dust and nothing. And then we don't bring anything with us, which is very sad. Then I beheld another mountain. I had to sneeze, sorry. Then I beheld another mountain containing trees from which water flowed like nectar. Its name was Serira and Carbonaba, and upon this mountain I beheld another mountain, upon which were trees of Alva. These trees were full like almond trees and strong, and when they produced fruit, it was superior to all perfume. You see, we're all different, but we all have an opportunity to produce fruit and to live before God in spirit and truth. Amen? And that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So... We are in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, in closing here. Amen? 
When I came to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was opened for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. Amen. So, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. Amen. So if you want to grow and stand, you have to die to yourself. And if you want to be confident in the Lord, you cannot care what people think. Because if you do, the fear of man is like a snare in the nose. It's like an earring with a chain attached to it. And if you care what people think, they will lead you around with that chain. Right? And then you're begging them for the scraps of acceptance. You don't have to live like that. You don't. You can give your life to Christ. Be free from the opinion of man. Because compared to Christ, who, who really cares, right? So he's leading us in triumphal procession every day, right? So Paul didn't find his, his brother, and he wanted to leave there. He wasn't comfortable in a situation, so he left. But in all the steps that he took, Christ, he knew. Christ was leading him in triumphal, triumphal procession. And through us spreads the fragrance, which is what we talked about in the book of Enoch. The trees that bear fruit every month, whose leaves are for the healing of the nation. They produce sweet-smelling medicines, which is the fragrance of Christ. You see, when you lay down your life, Christ lives in you. And then you release his fragrance everywhere. Amen. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death to the other a fragrance from life to life. It depends where you are is how you hear this. There are people who truly hate me, and they might watch this with, with vehement hatred. They're not going to get much from God out of it, right? I mean, same is true of your ministry. But there are people who would watch and honor God. Close your eyes, forget the lady and her wacky hair and whatever. Just seeking God in humility going to get some get the smell it's the same smell but it's different to different people based on where they come into it does that make sense so christ is sitting on his throne to to him each one of us produces a smell some is very bad some is very good but it depends where we are right it depends where we are in our heart and how we come to god and that's why he said, to lower and humble and, and be crushed because all essential oils and all fragrance comes of the rose petal comes from the rose petals being crushed. It's just how it works. Jesus showed us that and we just have to accept that. We may not understand fully yet what all that means, but we will in the name of Jesus. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not like so many peddlers of God's word. But as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God. Amen. That's the difference. In the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Because we're commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Amen. And so let's close there. God, we are commissioned by you. In the sight of God, we speak before you. And you come and fill the atmosphere with your fragrance because it's all you. In the name of Jesus, please bless everyone who listened. And that you, God, would be glorified in what you do for them. And how their tree is strengthened. And how that you would also give us supernatural experiences and an ability to worship you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. God bless you.